Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Evening Show right here on Smash FM here on a Thursday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's uh, go across to our friends over in the US in particular and of course speak to two amazing uh, people who uh, just did the, uh, of course, co-rate with the virtual orchestra, of course, uh, of, which is called Rebuild. And of course, we've got two very special guests to tell us all about it. Thanks both you for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. I really appreciate it. It's good to be here. Very grateful to be here. Thank you. No worries. Well, I'll give both of you to introduce yourselves and tell us a bit about um, the, the new project that you did uh, recently. Sure thing. Brielle, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, my name is Brielle. Uh, I am the proud big sister of Shelby. And um, this, this project that we did, I'll, I'll let Shelby uh, speak more to it because it's really uh, largely her creation. Um, and I think that like so many of the projects that she's done, she wanted to bring other people into it and make it a, a communal thing. And so she, she went ahead and brought her big sister in to write the lyrics of the song, which uh, was just a, a beautiful opportunity for us to collaborate together um, and, and help get this message out that's really important to both of us. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and I'm Shelby. I am Brielle's little sister. Um, and I'm a 22-year-old musician from South Florida originally. Um, and yeah, so this new project, um, the last time that I was speaking with you, Will, um, was about the What the World Needs Now video that we did a couple months ago. Um, and after that happened, and, and it kind of was everywhere on the internet, um, you know, for, yeah, we were very fortunate that it, it did that. Um, but so now we wanted to actually create another project that um, is more geared towards what we're going through right now, specifically in the States. Um, and that could also be a fundraiser for really important things right now. So 100% um, of the ad revenue that is being generated from this YouTube video, which is, as you said, um, a song called Rebuild that we wrote, 100% um, of the ad revenue will be donated and half of that money will be going to the NAACP to help in the Black Lives Matter movement. And the other half of the money will be donated to Americans for the Arts, which is an amazing organization that helps artists, especially those who have been out of work recently because of the coronavirus pandemic um, and you know the, everything that the world is, is experiencing right now. So we're really grateful for the opportunity to you know, create some art to help those in need. And, that's kind of uh, how we got here. Now, Shelby, um, as you mentioned, the last time we had you on the show was, I think, around two months ago now, um, back in May, and obviously we spoke about what the world uh, needs now, which I'm assuming we're still in it right now, um, that we still hopefully want to get back to normal um, very soon. But uh, I guess, um, does that, how does that sort of transition into rebuild? Because it sounds like, and I've, I've had a, um, obviously it's been on my playlist for quite a long time now. Um, and it's sort of, it's sort of, for me, it sort of cabrates really well from what the world needs now to the song Rebuild. I guess I want to get both your thoughts on it. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for listening to it. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, yeah, I, I think that there was sort of a natural progression from what the world needs now to rebuild um, in that, you know, with what the world needs now, you know, the message is about spreading love and it's about how important, you know, it is to, to tell the people that you love that you love them and, and be there for your friends and your family and everything. And I think, you know, my mindset at least um, has shifted a little bit um, in the last couple of months from this concept of, you know, spreading love and spreading positivity to continuing to spread love and positivity, but also adding that extra layer of really trying to help people, you know? And it's one thing to say, you know, I love you and, and I want the best for you, but to then move, go on to the next step of figuring out, okay, so what do you need and how can we, you know, work together to, to get there and to, to get to that kind of end game and, and, you know, what you're hoping for. Um, so I'm just really grateful that that kind of led us to rebuild and this, you know, this concept that we all need to work together to, to rebuild our world, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Shelby, you know, 
explain that really well. And I think just to, you know, build on what she said, um, that the, what the world needs now was kind of this moment of, of honoring how we feel, you know, and, and honoring um, our desire to, to connect through love. And then rebuild is like, all right, so what are we going to do about that? You know, how am I going to, I, I tell you that I love you, you know, through what the world needs now. And then in rebuild, like, that's how we're going to show each other um, that we love each other. And, and especially, um, you know, and, and with Shelby and I discussing, um, you know, the shifts that have happened um, and who, how we could most honor those who needed to be most honored through this message. Um, and it just became so clear that, that, that as you're saying, like the first kind of coming together and acknowledging that, that we need love and then, okay, how and why and through what, you know, through rebuilding. Um, and then what specifically do we do about that, you know, is, is with, you know, making it exclusively, you know, a fundraiser for, uh, for the black community and then also um, for to honor the artists because it is, you know, a video of 300 artists, you know, donating their, their time and their talents, you know, to this video um, and wanting to really um, do something in that, in that way. Now, uh, Bray, also you wrote the lyrics for Rebuild and, um, and, and tell us how did that all come out? What was your thought process around all these lyrics? Because I felt listening to it was really powerful and uh, I managed to share that with a couple of uh, other people here in Melbourne uh, and they felt the same thing. Um, how did that all sort of come about? Yeah, so, um, so Shelby and I had kind of, you know, she came to me and, and saying that like, I, I want to do this again, but with an, an original song. And I'm like, sounds great. And um, she, I, I write music um, and I, um, my music is more liturgical, spiritually uh, oriented. And um, so with this theme, I, I thought like, that sounds great. And yet for myself, like my, my process, I don't really ever like sit down to write a song. That's just not how it happens for me. Um, I really kind of get myself in a space of, you know, what type of message I'm wanting to, to channel and what type of, um, I just try to put myself in a space of being open to receive whatever I meant to receive. Um, and then kind of working on, on my part of it to actually turn that into words and melodies. Um, in this case, you know, words, cause my sister is a musical genius and took care of the, the music part. Um, and so I think, you know, specifically how it happened, I, I think that Shelby had already um, done a little bit of the chorus because we, you know, we wrote the lyrics, um, you know, together. So she had already um, had the chorus and I was sitting with that one night and I just kind of was, was meditating on it. And all of a sudden I like sent Shelby a text like really late at night. I'm like, I think this might be the first verse. Um, and then it just kind of like happened where I, um, I kind of just try to constantly you know, do, do the work to be prepared to receive whatever it is. And then usually for me, it just kind of like happens and I'm like, okay, cool. You know? Um, and so it, it followed uh, that similar type of a, of a process for this project for me. Now, Shelby, I have to ask you about the music side of thing. Uh, I was like, I'm assuming uh, you managed to get everyone that was involved in what the world means now onto this one. Was it an easy process again with this one like it was with the other one? Um, in, terms, in terms of like getting all the people together and everything like that? Um, yeah, again, it was the same exact way as the first one happened where I literally just posted a Facebook status and I said, hi, artists, want to be part of something? Comment your email address down below and, um, you know, let me know what instrument you want to play. Let me know. Um, what voice part you want to sing, if you want to dance. And then for this, we also included um, fine art. So a lot of people did paintings and drawings and um, just incredible artwork that was produced for this project. So um, I found that there were a lot of people, you know, having the, the desire and kind of 
itching for a creative outlet right now. So um, I think, you know, when presented with the opportunity, a lot of people luckily jumped on board and, and wanted to be part of it. So I'm, you know, we're both really grateful to the almost 300 people who, you know, spent the time to work on everything and, and made it made it happen with us. Now, I know this is going to sound a really silly question to ask uh, for both of you, which I know I asked the same question to Shelby on the first one about two months ago, uh, which I'm going to ask the same question again. Are both of you surprised on how this one turned out and how many viewers that you got? Real, you want to go ahead? Go ahead, Shelby. Um, so with the first video, um, the What the World Needs Now video, that kind of took off in ways I never could have imagined or um, just it's still I have immense trouble even processing that whole experience over the last few months. Um, and I think that, you know, we're in a very different place right now than we were um, a few months ago, especially in the United States. Um, with everything that is happening with, you know, racial inequality and, and just really, really intense issues that we're dealing with right now, where there are a lot more people, you know, outside protesting all day long and have been for weeks on end. And, and I think that the focus, since we've all been kind of in quarantine and, and you know, locked up, so to speak, for, for the last several months, I think, you know, the very beginning of that was we, we don't know what's going on, so we're going to create some art and, and hope for the best and, and it'll be what it'll be type of thing. Um, and I think now it's a, it's a very different spot for us where we're kind of, I don't want to say that we're used to what's happening online, like on social media and, and kind of this, um, this just like unfortunate time right now and, and this just really severe and, and scary time. But I think that the atmosphere has shifted to where people are making changes themselves instead of um, going on social media to like go for a distraction type of thing, if that is making any sense at all. Um, so I think that, you know, the first video took off um, because people were had that desire for art and they, you know, they saw something and they kind of clinged onto it and, and thought, oh, look at this piece. It's, it's you know, um, there's some hope with that. And I think that, you know, it's great that we have seen a lot of that recently. So um, all that's to say, I, we're, you know, we're, we're sharing it, but also being conscious of not taking up too much space online um, and trying to elevate, you know, uh, the people of color that their voices have, you know, been silenced for so long. And we're trying to elevate the voices of, of the people who need to be heard right now. So that was a very long answer, uh, but hopefully that made sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, I understand, you know, what Shelby's saying, and I think it's, um, you know, of course, when the first video happened, and I, I mean, I love my baby sister more than anything on this planet. Anyone who knows me, if you know one thing about me, that's what you know. Um, and so we, you know, we're so proud of her and so excited, and it was so, um, it was a, a real blessing for our whole family, you know, amidst this whole mess that we were all um, living in. And, you know, I think that, that as Shelby's saying, you know, the combination of kind of being um, just really saturated by uh, media um, and and also the the complexity of this video and and our message and it's it's interesting and Shelby and I had conversations about this that we you know our goal is is we want to be you know elevating black voices and and drawing attention to that message and we are two white girls doing that. And so it, you know, how do we use our privilege um, to help elevate the people that need to be heard? Um, you know, and for Shelby having, you know, established this um, presence, you know, with that first video that she shared and, and other videos after and kind of having the sense of like, you know, great, like you're someone that, that people are going to watch this video. How do we make sure that it stays about um, the voices that we're trying to elevate and, and doesn't become about, about us, you know? Um, and, and you hear about that kind of, you know, performative allyship stuff that, that happens and um, in, in creating the video and now in our journey of kind of sharing the video, that's been something that I know has been really important for both of us, that we want a lot of people to watch this video so that we can raise a lot of money and give it to people who need it. And also there's a complicated edge of us not being part of the community um, that, that needs that attention. And so again, how do we, 
how do we use that privilege to um, to help uh, without taking away in, in any way? And so that's something that that we're continuing to navigate and just doing our honest best at and hoping that that can be good enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, I have to ask both of you, obviously, you must have tell us whereabouts both of you are based. Um, and how's everything like over there in regards to how everything's going with the coronavirus and obviously the racial um, side of things? Has that, since this, move, uh, this, since this video has come out, has it sort of brought a lot of attention to a lot of people now um, that um, something needs to change? Absolutely. I think... Um we're both in South Florida right now, and um, just speaking about South Florida or Florida in general, um, I think we are the. Not I, good. <laughs> it's really bad <laughs> um, in terms of the coronavirus. It's it's really really terrible right now. Um, you know there are I think the last week in its entirety there were nine thousand new cases a day, um, and that's horrible. So um, yeah, I think. I, I think that, you know, there there are people who are definitely taking the necessary precautions and, and you know, wearing the masks and not leaving their homes when they don't need to and, and doing all the things um, that are really, really critical right now to try and, you know, flatten the curve, as they say, and, and really get rid of this thing. Um, and then unfortunately, you know, there are people who, who haven't really gotten the message yet. And, um, you know, I think part of this video also is, trying to, to reach those people and, and say like, you know, this, the only way that we're going to be able to rebuild our world and, and our country and everything is if we do it together. And if we're, you know, it's, it's an all hands on deck, it's everyone is on board to, to, to fix the, the problems that we have. And, you know, obviously the coronavirus pandemic is new, of course, in the last several months, but, you know, racial inequality has been happening for hundreds of years, you know? So I think we're finally at a breaking point where there will be a change, which I know we're, we're really hoping and, and looking forward to that day when, you know, I don't think it will be a, one morning we wake up and there's no more racism. Obviously it doesn't really work like that. You know, it's, it's embedded in our history that we need to, you know, work backwards from the ground up and, and really figure out how we're going to do this. Um, so I think while that's happening, we're just trying to do our, our little part in that and, and, you know, just helping get that message out and, and provide a little bit of, you know, it's also a song. So hopefully people enjoy, you know, just listening to a song as well. Of course, you know, as simple as that, where just a few minutes out of the day can be spent not watching the news and being really sad also. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of my thought on all of that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, with, with the coronavirus and also with, um, you know, fighting towards racial equality, that we're seeing people, um, and myself included, really look at, you know, it's easy to fall into, oh my gosh, we're all doomed. This is so insurmountably terrible. What's the point of trying? Um, you know, and as Shelby saying, you know, like racial inequalities, like systemic racial inequality that's been part of our country since before it was founded, that's not going to be, you know, fixed by any one thing. Mm -hmm. Similarly to, you know, the coronavirus is not going to disappear by any one thing. And yet, you know, each time one person wears a mask, that's, you know, one person who's not spreading the mask, the, sorry, the virus to the five people that they might see that day to the five, you know, and, and that is how change happens. And I think similarly, you know, the person who's willing to, um, you know, call out racism, you know, even a, a remark that one of their parents says at the dinner table, you know, something as simple as that. Or um, there was a scenario in, in my life where um, my university put out something that, that was not okay, you know? And, and so I, I organized, um, over 125, you know, students and faculty and whatnot to write a response letter and saying like, this is, this is what we stand for as the, the students and faculty and alumni of this university. Um, and then the president responded with a better letter, you know, that, that, that affirmed in very clear language that, you know, Black Lives Matter and our university supports that. 
And so I think that each time that we are able to step out of the like overwhelm and into action, um, that, that is a step forward. And, and that is what the message of, of the video is, is that, you know, each one of us, you know, there's 300 little boxes on the screen, you know, no one person, um, if any one person was missing from the video, honestly, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And yet if each of the 300 people thought that their part wasn't that important and didn't send in their video, it wouldn't exist at all. And, and the same is true really for, for so many things that the world is facing. You know, both, obviously we've had a chance to speak to Shelby about her music journey. I'll, I'll, so I'll get her to um, go through that again uh, for anyone that missed out two months ago. Um, how did both of you get involved in music and why did both of you choose it? <laughs> so our, our beautiful, amazing mother is a singing teacher. Um, so, and very involved in, in the arts world. Um, and so we were fortunate enough to grow up in a house where there was music all day, every day, um, whether it was, you know, um, our mother's voice students coming in, you know, in the afternoons and one after the other, we'd hear all of the musical theater repertoire ever written, essentially. Um, and then, you know, just um, our mom just instilling that love and, and passion for, for music um, in both of us. And I think we were lucky about that. Um, for me personally, music is pretty much everything that I do. Um, I just graduated undergrad from the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley um, with a degree in bachelor's of music in composition. Um, and I'm going to grad school for a master's um, in music as well. And so my whole life is music centric. Um, for Brielle, it's a little bit different. So go ahead and, and tell your, your story there, Brie. Yeah. And I'll brag for her. She's going to start her master's at Juilliard in the fall. So, um, <laughs> so we're, we're extremely proud of her. Thank you. Um, yeah. So as Shelby said, you know, growing up with our mom and, um, you know, at, at first music and musical theater was, was really my career path. Um, and Shelby, you know, being seven years younger than me, um, people would ask her, you know, kind of growing up very like, oh, are you going to be into music like your sister? Are you going to like to sing and perform like your sister? And um, it's just kind of like jokes on everyone. <laughs> like she's become this like prodigy of music, you know, and I kind of uh, shifted gears a little bit. And um, so for me, um, my, my undergrad is actually in dance, uh, psychology and substance abuse studies. Um, I have a master's in clinical psychology, um, and as of a couple weeks ago, I have a doctorate in clinical psychology. Um, so, and I, I'm also in school to be a rabbi. So, uh, a little plot twist there. Um, and yet, you know, music has always been, um, you know, one of the very first jobs that I got as a therapist was doing, um, you know, expressive arts therapy groups at a, a treatment, a substance abuse treatment center. Um, and in my rabbinic work, you know, of, of writing my own music and bringing that to the services that I lead and to um, the, the spiritual counseling sessions that I do. Um, so while the, I do lots of different things, you know, the really, if I were to look at the vast categories of my life, um, music really is uh, the one thread that connects all of them. Um, and then also connects me back to my family, which is so important. Um, now, what does music mean to both of you? I'm, I, like I said, music is kind of my whole life, my whole existence is somehow influenced by either the music that I'm writing or the music I'm listening to or the music I want to desperately write um, or the projects that I'm working on or, or whatever it may be, pretty much every decision that I make throughout my day and life um, is somehow influenced by or related to music in some way. Um, but I also, as I'm getting older, um, which I'm 22, like I, that's a ridiculous thing to say, but you know what I mean? Like as I grow up a little bit here, um, I, I'm starting to understand how important it is to also, um, while music is, is an incredible form of ex expression and, you know, I feel like I, I can speak my mind better through music than through words sometimes, I've also found how important it is to like 
understand who I am as a person outside of music as well and kind of digging down deep and, and figuring out like, okay, Shelby the musician uh, is, is, a, is a person and, and it's someone that I am, but I'm also Shelby the human who, you know, has family and friends and, and you know, people that are not in the music world and, and I'm trying very hard as of recent to kind of, um, you know, develop that, that myself as a, as a person um, that outside of, of my, myself as a musician. And um, hopefully that will make my art better. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been uh, focusing on and, and trying to find that balance in my life between, you know, me as, as a musician working on a lot of different things and me as a person who has to, you know, be with myself at the end of the day and be like, oh, think about the things that I did, you know? So that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, um, it's a tough question. To I think, yeah, I think it's, it's a universal language, you know, that music is, is what allows people to communicate, um, across cultures, across genders and gender expressions, across, um, religions across you know, anything anything you know that that you hear a beautiful melody and like universally we understand what a beautiful melody is you know it, it makes you feel something um and i know that i've um when i've you know engaged with new cultures new types of people you know i want to know like what's their music you know and and when i uh hear you know, somebody's music for the first time, it's like, oh, like, I, I understand your soul a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's how I see my own music. You know, when I put out, um, I released my first two albums uh, earlier this year, and my sister um, did all the arranging and all the uh, instrumentation and, and, and production work. And, um, and, and that's what it felt like. It was like, this is a little piece of, of my soul that I'm, I'm releasing into the world, which is like totally scary. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's really, that's really what it is. And when we can kind of release, you know, the things that, that make us feel separated, um, make us feel different and, and just kind of like allow like a beautiful melody to be, uh, we really kind of realize that, that we're not all that different after all. And that, um, we're, we're all just humans doing the best we can. Absolutely. Now, two final ones before I let both of you go, uh, which is, um, I guess, is any of the plans to maybe come down here and share the word down here? Uh -huh. Would love to. Absolutely. Love to. I think that um, as soon as the pandemic is somewhat over one day, um, you know, something that I've been thinking about a lot is, you know, taking travel for granted and Mm -hmm. being inside of your childhood home for four months straight um, reminds you that there is a whole world out there to explore. Um, obviously, I'm extremely grateful to be home and safe and healthy and with my family. Um, and it's also really exciting to think about a time where we'll be able to leave our homes and, and go explore. So definitely Australia is at the top of that list. I on, like truly I've been wanting to go to Australia for a really long time actually um so hopefully I will see you there very soon Will. Amen I second that. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry our, our dad actually uh like travel did a world travel when he was uh somewhere in between our your age. It was yeah, that, my that, yeah right 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 and uh, he spent a lot of time in Australia and was telling us a bit about it so very cool stuff. <laughs> Ah, well, hopefully we get to see both of you down here uh, in Australia. Uh, now, of course, one final one, which is for everyone that should follow both of you on social media and obviously uh, on the music channel side of things. How can I go about it? Yeah, sure. Um, so if you want to follow the things that I'm doing, um, all of my social media is my first name. So Shelby, S-H-E-L-B-I-E. Rassler, R-A-S-S-L-E-R, -S -S -E and that's on Instagram, uh, Twitter. There's an M in the middle uh, for my middle name, so Shelby M. Rassler, and then YouTube is just Shelby Rassler as well. So hope to see you there. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I'm on Facebook on uh, Brielle Page. So B-R-I-E-L-L-E P-A-I-G-E. Um, and then I'm an elder millennial, so I've resisted Instagram thus far. Um, so, uh, but I do have a website, so you can find uh, my music. I have a book out as well and some other exciting projects coming out shortly. Um, so it's uh, uh, my full name, Brielle Page Rassler. Uh, so B-R-I-E-L-L-E-P-A-I-G-E-R-A-S-S-L-E-R.com. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome having you on the show. I also will promote again that video uh, that uh, that was it's already up, and uh, I also get people to donate as well uh, to those obviously uh, fantastic, uh, of course, charities and uh, and all that. And uh, hopefully, we get to speak to both of you again sometime down the track. I'm sure there's going to be another new project coming up very soon, uh, based off what we've already seen the last couple of ones. And uh, hopefully we'll get to speak to both of you very soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us and, and just giving us this opportunity to, to chat with you. And it's always so lovely to, to talk to you. So thank you so much for, for inviting us to do this. Yes, I second what she said. It's been a, a real pleasure. And thank you so much for making time to speak with us and wishing you all the best. No worries. And that shall be breathed there. Of course, uh, as is it mentioned, uh, of course, we'll be posting up, uh, of course, that video again, of course, rebuild. And of course, you can donate. Uh, we'll put the links up for that as well, how you can do that. There's more on the Smash Evening Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Thursday edition. <laughs>